Hi everybody. Uh, I decided to make a video today because, um, you know, I just realized making a long form video is probably gonna take a long time. So it might be better to talk about all the reasons why I have decided to make the changes in my life in shorter videos versus long form videos. That way I can just kind of get them out there in piecemeal. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you guys for uh, all the kind words for my welcoming back. It was really nice. I can already tell that this was going to be a positive experience. I mean, I didn't expect any negative. Uh, I know my audience is pretty awesome and pretty, you know, um, you know, kind individuals. But it was still nice to see all the the warm and warm welcomes and and the the kudos to my health and stuff. Uh, and yes, I'm wearing a cowboy hat. I'm Farmer Jones, guys. Get used to it. But yeah, I just thought it'd be better for me to start talking about kind of this transition in smaller videos. That way I can kind of do one video at a time because there's multitudes to this. Uh, and there's there's relevance to why this video should probably come out now, you know? Um, but anyway, uh, I wanted to make this video because it felt pretty relevant. There have been, a, you know, there has been a pretty, um, there's been pretty tragic series of events in the last few weeks uh, in America. And this is obviously related to uh, the mass shootings. For those of you who follow any American or live in America, um, news is, it's all over the news. And, you know, I normally, I think in the past, I would normally would say a lot of stuff about this as soon as it happens um recently and as you most of you have you guys, most of you guys have probably knows i didn't say anything uh, on social network i think i might have posted or shared some things here and there but that's pretty much it uh private messages to friends and people but i i generally don't say anything publicly anymore um and the reason is is pretty obvious because this isn't the first i mean if this was like the first time then maybe it would be relevant to speak up but or have an opinion about it but i think i've gotten i just grown to start to come to the point of not caring to share my opinion about stuff because it just for one i don't think people really care um and two i don't think it really matters as much as i think people um i don't think it matters as much as people would like it to I mean, I've been watching, I've been watching videos after videos of, um, I've just been watching videos of, of videos of people just upset and it's just like obvious that people are, are losing it, man. They're like, like, what are we going to do? And it's, it's nice to think that maybe this is it. This is the time. This is the, this is the moment that people might, you know, finally get some backbone and make a difference. And I don't mean the individuals. I think people in general have always had this position. I just mean like the actual people in power. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I'm not convinced. Um, I'm already seeing the pieces in place that have that are showing me that this is going to be just another, it's going to, it's going to roll over and we're going to forget about it in a year. Um, or we're not going to forget about it, but we're going to just be like, Oh yeah. Remember how we just still don't give a fuck about children dying. And so why am I talking about this? And what, like, well, if you don't care to share your opinion about this, why do you care to share your opinion? Well, this is one of the reasons why I left America. It's not because I'm afraid uh, of getting shot. I don't think that that was a, a thing that I was going to experience. I lived in a relatively, you know, nice area in California. And even if that was the case, like there, I wasn't, you're never safe anywhere, obviously. But um, 
uh, California has pretty strict gun laws relative to the rest of the United States. You know, unlike Texas. And so what it comes down to is like the reasons why I left America was the collection of this behavior. It wasn't so much the individual stuff. It was the collection of stuff. It was like the collection of things. This is, this is just one incident. There's all the stuff when it comes to like, um, how, you know, black Americans have been treated in America and honestly still being treated in America. Uh, it is the collection of the gun stuff, the mat just like, obviously just what just happened recently. It is the recent stuff with how abortion laws have been going on. And I'll be, be honest with you guys, I have an indifference opinion about this. It is a hard argument and I've learned to just not really have a hard stance on this because I'm not a woman and I don't really think I should have an opinion about this either way. But still it's like, it's a tough one and it's a weird one to be making laws around that easily. But it's just like the way we go about it. It's just the way we go about a lot of the stuff. It's the way we handle our healthcare system. It's just the way we talk about it. It's like the way we talk about our problems as a larger society that we just aren't reasonable. We're not rational. We're not empathetic. You know, I hear stuff like facts over your feelings and I hear that and I think to myself, but feelings also matter. You know, like I actually care about your feelings too. Like I know that, let me use an example. Let's say you have a friend who is overweight. Calling them fat would be factually true, but would you call them fat? That's not like, that's not a, a, what a good person would do. You know what I mean? So just because it is a fact doesn't necessarily mean it's a nice thing to do. That makes us fucking robots if we treat individuals through facts. And whenever people start talking to each other that way and using that as a way to discuss their arguments, you know, I, I had an argument with a really close friend and they were really stuck on this healthcare stuff there, you know, there, because I was telling them, it was like, you know, this healthcare stuff is a real big issue to me. Like, I don't know why we can't sort it out. And I brought up the argument of like, you really aren't bothered that one of my healthcare bills was almost a hundred thousand dollars. Like that doesn't bother you. You're okay with that. You know, like you think that that's okay. But because I know that they've lis been listening to a very specific certain level of talking points, like they just, they had like a dialogue tree they just couldn't get out of, but they're a good person. And the way that I framed that argument, I, I was speaking to their humanity. And eventually I, I think, they realized that like, I'm talking to AJ and of course that matters to me that, that he had to deal with that. And they came to terms with that. And they told me that, of course that bothers me. And I'm like, yeah, well, well, what are we doing here? Why are we arguing over these types of things? Why are we arguing whether this is a mental health issue, a gun control issue, this or that? when there's warm bodies just put into the dirt that could have been prevented since Sandy Hook. This is just true. As much as people might not agree with this, there are evidences of this everywhere else. And it is not that it is not that we are unaware of these truths. We have actually not even tried anything. It'd be cool if we tried something and it didn't work. Great. I'm more than happy to have some constructive criticism with some policies that just don't fucking work, but we just don't try anything. And because we don't try stuff and it doesn't work, um, then we can critique it and we can try something else, but we don't even try anything. And this is something, this is the pattern of behavior that I've been seeing. Um, I remember when, uh, George Floyd passed 
And I made the same argument to one of my close friends. I said, hey, you know, we'll see what happens in a year. See how people feel still. And it's the same difference. And I started to just look in the mirror and kind of have this moment of like, I was born an American and I am happy that I have been given lots of access to very beautiful and wonderful things that that privilege allows me. But there are other things in this world that are more than America. I married a beautiful Nicaraguan woman. There's a whole side of my children's culture that they have no real immediate connection to. Sorry, my dogs are barking. I don't know why closing the curtain would make it any quieter. There's a whole other level. There's a whole nother level of a culture that they can be exposed to. Let's try that for a little bit. Now, let's be clear. Nicaragua has its own challenges. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh yeah, Nicaragua is X times better or worse. It is just different. I've been to many different countries and they're different. Everybody has their own differences. I'm just saying like, I want my children to experience the world so that they have a better worldview. So they don't get trapped in this mentality of thinking that America is the best and the greatest and there's nothing else out there. I want them to be educated on a global scale. I think they should understand that there's more to humanity than America. You know what I mean? And I am very lucky that my dad was in the military, Air Force, and we traveled a lot. I got to see a lot of the world. I'm very privileged that my career allowed me to see lots of people around the world. And I think it makes you a better person if you get to meet people from different parts of the world. You get to see their cultures. You see people for who they are. But I remember I would ask people what they thought of America, like three stereotypes. And amongst the top three, the number one thing that they would always bring up was that we have a lot of guns. This is not me projecting my liberal agenda. This is what everybody else sees us as, okay? I'm a registered independent for a reason. I think both sides make some faulty ass arguments in specific and contextual points of views, depending on whatever we're arguing. I'm, I'm black and Korean. I am a mixed kid. My kids are even more mixed. They're Nicaraguan, black and Korean. You know, they have an immigrant mom. I'm all over the place. I got all sorts of opinions about all sorts of things. But I left America to enrich my children's lives culturally. And you know what's funny is that, you know, part of me wanted to, um, you know, live with my parents because, you know, I wanted to, to have my, my children see and experience, you know, their, the elderly, I wanted them to be around my, my mom and dad and they live in El Paso and El Paso, Texas, by the way, for those of you who are not from America. And I, I thought it was ironic because my dad said, you know, my mom and dad were like, you moving to Nicaragua. Isn't that, isn't that dangerous? Isn't it more dangerous out there? And I said, Nicaragua is not that dangerous, dad. It's, it's fine. And I said, you know, what's really interesting to me though, is that you think that Nicaragua is dangerous when just not too long ago, there was a active shooter in one of, I think their malls in El Paso that they regularly go to. Meaning that, um, me and the kids could have been at that mall just on any weekend on the bad, on a bad day. And one of your grandchildren or your only son could have got shot in America. And you know, what's even crazier is let's say I got shot and survived. It could have put me in crippling debt for surviving. So as much as it sounds great, this American dream, like idea, like it is part of the reason, and I'll get into more of the, like I said, this is a longer ass video. <laughs> I get into the more of the, the lifestyle inflation 
And that is less of an American problem. That is more of a, a cultural, like a Western industrial uh, problem. It's like more of a um, industrialized idea. And that's, this, you see this everywhere else. I'm half Korean. That, you see this also in Korea, for instance. Uh, they made a whole TV show about this squid game. <laughs> But, but this, this specific topic about moving uh, to Nicaragua, this is one part of it. There, there are things about America that I truly love, and I really do love America for there is a lot of diversity, as much as people might think that there isn't. There really is quite a lot. Um, I wouldn't necessarily exist because of it, because of it, and my children wouldn't exist because of it. Um, there is a lot of wealth of knowledge there is a lot of amenities that people don't, they take advantage of. You don't even realize you have access to all this great stuff. It is amazing. There is a plethora of uh, access to education, uh, fresh water, um, convenience. This is a hit or miss for me. I'll, I'll talk more about that in some other video. Um, but the, the crux of it is, is this, uh, you know, it's it's a great place for a lot of a lot of different reasons but let's make no mistake it has its flaws and i think one one of my greatest critiques is that it's not really good about addressing its flaws it just isn't um i don't think many nations are to be frank but america is just amongst them but you know what let's not end this on a on a a, a dry note. Why don't we go for a walk? Let's go outside. Let's look outside for a little bit. Yeah, I thought I'd take you guys outside for a walk. I mean, people are used to me being indoors, but with all my health issues, I need to go for more walks more frequently. I'll show you around, show you the, the works, the, the new lifestyle. Just a little bit, not too much of it, because I can't be walking around too much. If my wife knew that I was out and about, she'd kill me. More so that I've been killing myself, you know what I mean? <laughs> but look how, uh, yeah, look how lush it is. This is this is literally right in front of my house. Um, right now I'm just walking around, but just getting that blood ro flowing. But uh, yeah, let's go see some of the animals. I thought I'd go for a walk outside. Check out this... Uh, Check out this view. Hold on, let me get a better angle. Yeah, that's outside of my house. Yeah, so now I live out kind of in the country. We live close to a, a farmer. Um, he's a really nice guy. He's been teaching my daughter how to uh, ride horses. But let's say hi to the dogs. There's Mocha. Hey, Mocha. Oh, happy dog. And there's Poofy. Oh my god, Let, you guys got your food everywhere. See, Midnight's got the right idea. All I get, you guys, this food's all over the place. Hey, Midnight, come here. Come say hi. Midnight, <laughs> come here. Good boy. Who's a happy dog? He's I'm eating, dude. <laughs> Alright, let's keep walking. Let's keep going on this adventure, y'all. I gotta be careful though because there's these uh, ants that live out here or like my friend was telling me a friend grant was saying that there's like millions of different breeds of ants and they just like murder your feet and i remember when i first got here they were biting me like crazy and i have an allergic reaction to them but now i they just bite me and they just sting badly but still i don't like getting bit by them you hear all that nature did it was raining like crazy, so there's a lot of loose and muddy dirt. But, man, look at the clouds. Hold on. Look at that, dude. It's crazy. Looks like a matte painting. You know you're you're a <laughs> you're a concept artist or art, a digital artist when you look at real life as digital art you're like oh that looks like something out of star wars <laughs> yeah let's let's keep going for a while you guys want to see some more animal? she was following me she's like you gonna feed me because usually if i'm out here i'm giving them some hot dogs or something 
Uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see the bunnies. Appreciate you guys going on this walk with me. The dogs, they were following me too. They were shy at first. They didn't want to come say hi. But then uh, midnight was... Yeah, see? Hold on. Midnight. Who's a happy dog? Who's a happy dog? Who's a happy mocha? I'll pet you, but my hand's all messed up. I'm on uh, painkillers right now. They took the sutures out today. Man. The, uh, my fingers hurt real bad. Still. They recover good. But check out the... Check out the chickens we got. We got some chickens, y'all. There's one right there. And we got a baby... Oh, yeah, we got some baby bunnies. Can't go in there by myself, though. Just in case... Oh, my God, look at that. Can't see it. Let me see if I can try to do a zoom, zoom in. Let's see what we got here. Oh, uh, with the mama. The Chester. <laughs> Why are you running from your own babies? I mean, I can relate. I get it. So get away from me. Yeah. Little baby bunnies. They are, they're growing up so big already. Yeah, we got straight up chickens too. Chicken big. Oh, I forgot to end the video with a bye. <laughs> all right. This video might be all sloppy, but thanks again, guys, for watching this video. And thanks for listening to this rant. I'm glad I'm breaking it up into pieces because I realized this would be a, such a long video if I didn't. Anyways, cheers.